Welcome back to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba, your host with Mervyn Price. Hello, Michael. And Andrew Kernan. He is our guest host. And you can look for Andrew. Andrew, you're going to be here on the Monday shows regularly, right? Oh, yeah. This okay. is fun. All right. Well, good. Uh, we're talking with uh, Doug Clark, CEO, Design VR. And uh, we left off on some important topics. And we're going to cover a bunch more ground. Did Andrew, did you, did you want to lead off? Sure. Um, you know, we, you'd mentioned re- that you recently had Samsung join your board. Mm-hmm. With all the advertising they've done in the VR space, this must be really exciting. Can you please share how this may affect your company and what it means to you guys going forward? Absolutely. Absolutely. So Nick uh, DiCarlo with Samsung um, here in their Richardson office heads up for the company Samsung as a whole their VR efforts. And the one thing they recognize, and as you, as you just mentioned, they're advertising through the last quarter of last year, they are very focused and very, um, anyway, very focused on the VR sector. And so phones they're creating today or phones they're rolling out today are a step ahead of the process and being able to present VR content, VR AR content. So when I had a meeting with Nick last year after a, couple, a conference, I asked him and said, would you be willing to join us and help us through understanding what technology we're going to be seeing coming down the pike? And as, as I mentioned earlier, it's important as our clients are presenting space that the, that the phones or the devices that their clients are using can view the space at, in the same way that they that our client is uh, presenting it. So as with Samsung, they recognize that two things are occurring today, that the consumer adaptation of the VR uh, products has been somewhat slow. So that's why you saw in the last quarter of last year that they had a huge, huge um, I- uh, increase in their presentations. Then as we look at the adaptation of the consumer, they, they, want, they want to accelerate that. And they look at us saying, we're a B2B, a business to business. And then they, in the business component, consumers will be using the VR uh, process and we're using phones for that. And they see that the consumer adaptation, we will help help with that ap- adaptation. So that's one of the reasons why they came alongside. The second part is, is they recognize our innovative some of our innovative processes and the fact that we're looking at ways of just making our our sector, architects, designers, and home builders more efficient. And they want to help us with having devices that will make us efficient, make it more efficient for our clients. So having Nick uh, on board has just been a a huge, huge plus for us. Wow, that's amazing. Um, I know this isn't your first tech startup. Uh, Can you give us a little bit about your background and other successes you may have had um, with tech startups? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, as I said, this is my fifth startup. I had four previous. Uh, my first one, my first two were working for large uh, Fortune 500 companies. G Capital was my first one. GMAC Commercial Mortgage was my second one. I was an employee, but helped ramp them ramp up two startups that they uh, uh, went to market with, and we were able to ramp them up, and they um, uh, sold those three to four years after that. My next one uh, was with, uh, it was, the company was called Resident Data. It was a, it was a, Tom Hicks fund back in the um, uh, early 2000s. And um, when I went on board, I said, well, I'll come on board, but we need a piece of the pie. Wait, l- I, let me jump in there for a second sure. stay on that topic. Just give the audience a scale of where you started with these startups, what was involved dollar-wise, and where they ended up, what they ended up selling them for, because I'm, I'm sure that, you know, that that's going to be You're notable. Right. Yeah, no, that's a good question. As it relates to the first two, G Kaplan, G, GMAC Commercial Mortgage, I wasn't, um, uh, what's the right word, um, on the side where I knew what they were sold for. I was an employee. Okay. However, with the Hicks and with my last one, uh, we raised in the ballpark of about $3 million, and we sold um, right at 10 times, 10 times those, uh, those amounts. So Nice work. Thank you. So in this case... Um, we're doing the same thing where my last two resident data and the next one was compliance depot, where I was the found, co-founder and uh, chief operating. We, uh, did the same thing we're doing with design VR. We went to our client base. We said, what do you want? And basically we built it. 
Sounds simple, right? Yeah. Well, we reverse engineered it, reverse engineered both of those platforms, uh, Resident Data and Compliance Depot, and then delivered to market. And we were the first ones to, one of the first ones to deliver those particular products. And we were one of the first ones out, meaning that we were one of the first ones to be acquired. Wow. Amazing. Good stuff. It, questions, Merv, Andrew? I just wondered how, how commercially available will this be? Will a, a regular architect be able to afford this in his office at once, uh, one time soon? Yeah, that's a good question. And that's one thing that when we uh, started putting the platform, the, the business plan together, that this, is the, this vertical, meaning the architecture designers home, are very price sensitive. And we had to recognize that. So the answer to your question is yes, it's very affordable. And in fact, we have been asked, are you sure you can do it for that? And in the first iterations, absolutely. Absolutely. Good. All right, Andrew, more questions. Yeah. Please. Um, can you tell us where you're at um, as far as funding thus far in, in this project? What, where you guys, what, where you're going, and what the opportunity is? What, what is the mar- the upside market? Yeah, Andrew, good question. So we closed our our friends and family round uh, earlier this year, and then opened our current round, our seed round, uh, in May of this year. It's only eight hundred thousand dollars. And that particular, this, this round we're, we're working on right now gets us to our first month of revenue. Our 800000 represents a valuation of about $2.6 million, so it's a very, um, uh, from our standpoint, aggressive and rewarding back to our, um, to our investors. What's the upside opportunity on this? Uh, that's simple. So over the, over the course of 24 to 36 months, we uh, ramp up the revenue, and then um, we will be looking for uh, an exit, meaning an acquisition, uh, much like we did with my last two. Yeah. Well, with partners like Samsung on your board, it seems like you're very well positioned. It should help. Tell me, when uh, an architect would want to use this, would he buy it or would he lease it? We're a, sus- a subscription model, uh, effectively a licensing um, okay. a model, so yes. Okay, and the, the what is the hardware that comes with it? No. Okay, how do they how do they get get the VR to their eyes then? So the we will convert the file and then turn that file around to them um, via um, um, oh, what's the right word? Does, uh, does it play on yeah. any kind of phone, or that um, do you need special goggles or? No, it'll play on any phone with any VR headset. So we're, it, agnostic, we're agnostic as to the to the hardware that's required or the headsets that are required. Any smartphone. Correct. Thank you. Right. So any smartphone, and then you then they'd also purchase one of the commercially available set of goggles that you wear to, to see VR. Yes, absolutely. So Our clients have talked about that where potentially they will probably go out and buy headsets for their clients, depending on who the client is, obviously. And then the Google Cardboard, for instance, they can buy a whole stack of them, brand them, and send them to their clients. That's amazing. Uh, okay, so let, let me get this straight. It, do they have to be in the same proximity, or can you can have people looking at the same file from different locations? No, that's a great question. And that's the reason why our clients like this is because they can be in multiple locations across the world, where uh-huh. you could be in vacation and give me a place, uh, you know, Dubai, Fiji, and your architect, designer, home builder calls you up and say, I want to present a file. Let's take a look at it. And you pick up your phone, put it in the headset, you make the changes, and the orders can be completed at that point. I would think the film industry would go crazy with this for set design. The television industry would go crazy with this for set design. What are, I mean, I know what you're doing now, but what are the multiple applications that you can see this growing into now that you've got this this baby you launched and it's off and it's running? No, good question, because um, any any sector that uses a CAD file, and it could be uh, yacht builders, it could be, right. you know, uh, car manufacturers, anybody that creates a CAD file for their particular product, we can then convert it and present it. It's interesting. So what you're saying is it's also a process agnostic. Yes, absolutely. That's extremely viable and vital. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Now, do you, have you had any relationship with AutoCAD yet as far as their involvement directly with you? No, not yet, uh, but we will uh, very shortly, only because of the fact they recognize companies such as ours as being distribution channels for them. So we'll have a very close relationship with them as we progress. That's great. And, and so let me picture this. They're sending that CAD file out to everybody. How big is that file, that VR file that needs to be emailed? That depends. Yeah. 
That depends because uh, it could be a space that's uh, just one room, which could be you know a you know a, a ten gig file. It could be a multiple story building, which could, then goes into you know very large large files. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well. Wow. Any more questions, Merv? For no, I don't have any questions, but uh, one, one thing that, uh, that I'm thinking is the, certain things like this have been available to the industry. Do you have any known competitors who are as advanced as you? No, not as advanced as we are, but we have competitors that will convert a file, and, but don't provide the business components as I just talk, we talked about earlier, okay. and also the real um, uh, proprietary piece where converting that, taking that converted file and updating that CAD, the originated CAD file. So that keeps you separated from any competition that you've got coming out. There. Exactly. It's hard for them to catch up to you with it'll, what's going on. It'll be hard. How, some people are going to ask you the hard questions, and that one of which would be, what do you think your lead time is on that? Because that, that equates to market share uh, that you can own and keep. So the ability to attract the, the client is something we've done, or I've done, right. in two previous startups where we recognize what – and then we said it earlier, we've reverse engineered based on the, their needs. Right. So us, this marketplace is extremely large. It's global. And it's one where we're, we, don't, we don't need to capture um, the entire marketplace. We recognize that. And we're not going to. But we, we will be able to develop those relationships with our clients where they will stay with us. And um, as we did with my last two startups, they'll stay with us and they'll stay, us th- stay with us through the acquisition. Oh, gosh. Doug, thanks for being a guest on the show. Andrew, thank you for the introduction. You're welcome. All right, thank you've been listening to Doug Clark, CEO, Design VR. DesignVR.net is a website. Please go take a look at it on CEO Money with Michael Yorba, Marvin Price, and our special guest on IT Monday, Andrew Kernan. We'll be right back on the other side of this break with Kent Wilson, Alpine Ford Technologies.